So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. We are dealing with uh, Newton laws, and uh, in the last class, I think we had seen what is a pseudo force. We remember what is a pseudo force, and where we apply the pseudo force. Can you tell me what is the pseudo force, and where do we apply the pseudo force? Yes. What do you remember about pseudo force? And where can we apply this pseudo force? Tell me. What is pseudo force and where we can apply it? <laughs> Am I audible and visible to all of you? <laughs> Yes, I'm asking you a question, Meta. What is pseudo force, and when can be when and where it is applied? Force which does not exist. Force which does not exist is an unreal force, imaginary. <laughs> when do we need to apply it? When are we supposed to apply pseudo force? In what cases? <laughs> Sorry. In what cases we are need to uh, we need to apply pseudo force? <laughs> Tell me. So it seems like you have not studied. So I'll give you five minutes. Go through the last class. Non inertial reference. Non inertial reference frame. Okay. What are non inertial reference frames? What are non inertial reference frame? Tell me first. What are non inertial reference frames? Imaginary or non real? N non inertial reference frame are imaginary. And it seems like uh, no one has studied what we had done in the previous class. So I'll give you five minutes. Go through what we had done in the previous class. Read everything. And then we will start the class. So you have five minutes to read and answer my questions. And then we will start the class. You have to read what is inertial reference frame. You have to read what is non-inertial reference frame. You have to tell me what is pseudo force, what is the magnitude of pseudo force, what is the direction of pseudo force. I'll ask you questions. If you give me answers, then only we'll go ahead. Otherwise, you will keep studying it. So you have two minutes to study it and give me the answers. Once you are ready, let me know. That's how we have studied. And remember, Bita, if you don't uh, read what we had done in the previous class, and then you come to the next class, the next class is going to be all waste. So of no use. This is physics. Every class is related to the previous class. If you don't go through the previous class, you will not understand anything that we do in this class. And I don't think that you are studying. I saw it yesterday also that you could not solve questions. That means you did not do what we did in the last class. Today also, same thing. That's why I asked you questions and I did not get satisfactory answer. That is why I'm giving you time. <clears throat> go through what we had done in the last class once and then only I start the class. Five minutes is more than enough to see what we had done in the previous class.
Have you gone through the previous class, everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, now tell me what are non inertial reference frames? Accelerator frame of reference are called non inertial frame of reference. Okay, uh, any non inertial reference frame are Newton laws valid? No answer. Five more minutes to study. Yeah. I asked you a question now. Nah. Are Newton laws valid in non inertial reference frames? Sir, can you repeat the question again? Are Newton laws valid in non inertial reference frames? Are Newton laws valid in non-inertial reference frames? Sir, the uh, non-inertial uh, Newton's law of motion are not applicable in non-inertial reference. So you are leading from what you had written. You don't remember it because it is the same language that you are using. Anyways, so Newton laws are not applicable. Good. All these are questions that are going to come in your exams, beta. They might not give you numericals on this, but they will ask you questions like this. So how can I make Newton laws applicable? What can I do to make Newton laws applicable in non-inertial frames? What I can do <clears throat> to make Newton laws applicable in non-inertial frames? Newton laws are not valid in non inertial frames. So, what can I do to make them valid? Or to write the extra, extra force is applied. What is that extra force known as? Pseudo force. What is the magnitude of this pseudo force? M A. What is M? What is A? M is mass. A is acceleration of non-inertial frame of reference. What is the direction of this pseudo force? Opposite to A. Okay. Good. Chalo then. Now since we know what we are supposed to do, then we will move ahead. Now, we had done the question on spring balance in the last class. Now the same question on spring balance will come, but with a twist. What is the twist? So this is the first question. Now I have the same spring balance, but it is kept in a lift and this lift is moving up with an acceleration of two meter per second square. It is the same spring balance. And you have a mass of five kg hanging from the spring balance. You have a mass of 5 kg hanging from the spring balance. Now again, you have to tell me what is the reading in the spring balance. A spring balance, a mass of 5 kg is hung, is attached to a spring balance. And this is kept in a lift which is going up with an acceleration of two meter per second square. You have to tell me what is the reading in the spring balance. You have two minutes to solve this. If you can do it on your own, well done. Else, I will help you out. But I would be very happy if you can do it on your own.
Anyone with anything that looks like an answer? Yes. No one knows the answer. Shall I do it? Hundred. Hundred. Hundred newtons. Okay. How did you get hundred newtons? There must be a reason, right? Tell me the reason. Five. Remember, no answers are right or wrong. It only depends on how we have done this and how we have uh, imagined it. M T is equal to mg. T is equal to mg. Okay, so T is the tension here, and mg is here. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So you write the equation T mass is five, g is ten. You don't get hundred. You get fifty. Why is your answer hundred? You said hundred, but the answer is coming as fifty. How did you get an acceleration? So uh, I multiply this by acceleration. Yes, sir. So basically, I multiply m with g and a. Will it look like force? No. No. Then I would. Then I, I I can't do this, right? I can't multiply it by acceleration twice. Because then it is not force. It is mass into acceleration into acceleration. Mass into acceleration into acceleration cannot be force. That is not correct. Anyone, any other idea? Anyone has any other idea? Now this is kept in a lift which is going up. And I am going to make the equation of this block from the lift itself. So I'm hanging in this lift like a Spider-Man. I'm trying to make the equation of this block. But as soon as I'm in the lift, I've drawn the free body diagram. T is upwards, great. Mg is downwards, great. These are the real forces. They actually exist. But then I realized that I am not in a inertial reference frame. And I found out that I am moving upwards with an acceleration. Therefore, I must now apply. I must now apply what? I must now apply on this body one unreal force, which is the pseudo force, because I am making the equation from a non inertial frame. So that pseudo force becomes equal to m into a. Since the acceleration is upwards, the pseudo force is downwards. Now, when I write the equation of this block, the equation is not like this. How does the equation look like? The block is still in equilibrium. T is upwards. M into A is downwards. M into G is also downwards. Or effectively, I can write it as M into G plus A. So the answer will come as 5 into 12. And the answer will come as 60 newtons. 60 newtons is the tension in the string or 60 newtons is the reading in the spring balance. Do we understand this? I cannot multiply mg by a. I cannot multiply force with acceleration. We don't know what is force into acceleration. <clears throat> Do we understand this? So please note it down. Sir. Noted? Yes, sir. Shall I move on to the next question? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Again, I have a spring balance. The mass of 5 kg is still attached. But now it is moving in a lift and this lift is moving down with an acceleration of 2 meter per second square. What is the reading in the machine? I mean, what is the reading in the spring balance on machine? What is the reading now? And the forty Newton. Yes. 40 Newton, sir. 40 Newton. That is correct. Thank you, sir. Now, again, I will make the equation. I will sit in this lift and I will make the equation. How will I make the equation? First, I will see, I will write the forces that I see. T is upwards. Mg, which is 5 into G, 50 is downwards. Now, these are the real forces. But then I see that I am moving, oops, wrong color. But then I see that I am moving down with an acceleration A. That means I am not in an inertial frame. So I will now have to apply pseudo force. Acceleration is downwards here. Therefore, the pseudo force will be upwards. Mass is 5. Acceleration is A. So 5A, the pseudo force is upwards. Now I will have to write the equation of motion. How will the equation of motion look like? The block is still in equilibrium. T is upwards. 5A is upwards. So T plus 5A is equal to 5G. Or I can write in this case T is equal to 5 times or M times G minus A. So T will be equal to 40 Newton. So what do I see? And I can remember it so that I don't have to do it again and again. When the lift is going down with an acceleration, effectively it becomes G minus A. We call this G minus A as actually the effective G. This is the term that is used, G effective. So. In the case of lift going down, G becomes G effective equal to G minus A. But when the lift is going up, when the lift is going up, this value is again known as G effective. In this case, G effective becomes G plus A. Do we understand this? Yes, so sir. you have G. You just put the value of G effective and you get your answers. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. yes Everyone understands this? Okay. Let me bring a third question. This is the third question. Same lift, same spring balance. Same block 5 kg is now moving down with a velocity 2 meters per second. Again, the same question. What is the reading in the spring balance? Okay. 
I'll give you two minutes. Yes, anyone with an answer? No one? Shall I do it? Okay. So again, I make the equation from inside the lift. I sit in the lift. I see the forces. This is T. This is Mg. I realize that I'm sitting in a moving thing. But then I see that this is moving with a uniform velocity. If it moves with a uniform velocity, is it an inertial frame or is it a non-inertial frame? It is moving with a uniform velocity. Is it an inertial frame or is it a non-inertial frame? Inertial frame, sir. That means I don't have to apply any force. So T will be equal to mg and the leading would be 50 newtons. That is the answer. The leading in the spring balance will be same if the lift was at rest or the lift is moving with uniform velocity because both are inertial frames. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Note down this thing. Done, sir. Complete, sir. Completed, sir. Okay. So now we move on and uh, we move to the next and the last thing that we have to do in this chapter. And that is known as problems on weighing machine. Problems on weighing machine. Now, this is a man standing on a weighing machine. This small thing that you see here, this is the weighing machine. This pink thing. What does a weighing machine do? This pink thing is a weighing machine. What does a weighing machine do? Hmm. What does the spring balance do? It reads the value of tension, the force in the spring. What does the what does the weighing machine do? What does the weighing machine do? Yes, what does the weighing machine do? No idea? It is used for to measure the weight. 
तो वेइंग मशीन मेजर्स वेट हाउ डज इट मेजर वेट हाउ डज द वेइंग मशीन मेजर वेट तो दिस इज द डायग्राम ऑफ अ वेइंग मशीन द मैन इज स्टैंडिंग ऑन द वेइंग मशीन and if you draw the free body diagram of the man there is a normal reaction r coming on this man this is the weight no this is the force applied by weighing machine on the man which is equal to the force which is applied by the man on the weighing machine now if you draw the free body diagram of this man this man is in equilibrium is not going anywhere so what will be the equation for this uh, man this r will be equal to mg do we understand this this will be the equation for this man or the weighing machine weighing machine does not measures the weight of the person what does it measure what does the weighing machine measure the weighing machine measures the value of this r the weighing machine measures the force applied by man on the machine or machine on the man so weighing machine measures measures the value of r do we understand this it does not measure the weight it measures the value of this normal reaction r and if the man is standing like this the value of r would be equal to the weight of the man do we understand this yes, sir that is what a weighing machine does now if the man is stationary not moving anywhere the weighing machine will measure the actual weight or the normal reaction r yes or no but if we change it change it to a lift and the lift starts to move then what will happen the lift starts to move if it is on a lift then what will happen so we'll do it case by case and i will give you everything so you can note it down and see for yourself what will happen in all of these cases and if you can understand it is same as what was happening in case of a spring balance if the lift lift is at rest the velocity is zero case number 1 lift is at rest velocity is zero acceleration is zero r will be equal to mg his apparent weight apparent weight is the weight measured by the machine is a parent weight will be equal to the actual weight do we understand this if the lift is at rest he will measure the actual weight of the body do we understand this note it down let me know once you are done
Have you noted it down? Yes, sir. Now the next case comes where the lift is moving upwards or downwards with constant velocity. So it may be moving like this with a velocity v or it is moving like this with a velocity v and the velocity is constant. In that case also, the acceleration is zero. That means it is still an inertial difference frame. The weight will be equal to mg. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Okay, this is the second case. I hope you can under understand this case is exactly same as when the weight, uh, when we had done the question of the spring balance. Yes or no? Spring balance moving with a constant velocity, the lift moving with a constant velocity, same case. Noted it down? Yes, sir. Third case, the lift is moving up with an acceleration A, which is less than G. So when uh, we have seen when we moving up, we can replace G by G plus A, yes or no? So the apparent weight or the weight or the value of R becomes M into G plus A. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Shall we move on? Yes, sir. The next case, it is still moving up, but it is moving up with an acceleration equal to G. In that case, G plus A becomes 2G and the answer becomes two times the actual weight. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. We're just applying. We are just uh, writing the formula and putting A as equal to G. Got this? Then comes the next case. It is moving down with an acceleration G. It's moving down with an acceleration G. Uh, it is moving down with an acceleration A. We replace G by G minus A. So apparent weight will be less than the actual weight. Do we understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Completed, sir. Next one. If the lift is falling with an acceleration G, we can call it the lift is in free fall. The lift is in what? Free fall. Freely falling lift. The lift is in free fall. Freely falling. The lift, the weighing machine in the lift will not register any weight. This is known as the state of weightlessness which you feel in outer space, there is no gravity. So basically you will be in a gravity free space. Do you understand this? There is no weight that you feel.
the last case which may not come anyways but uh, they may just ask you what will happen in this case if it falls with an acceleration which is greater than g which is very difficult then what will happen your reaction will become negative so it will fly off in air basically if it fly off in air it will stick to the ceiling of the lift so if the acceleration is more than the value of g then you will fly off that would be a great uh, spectacle but uh, won't be possible so if you want to fly off fly for free what you do you get in a lift and pray to god that it falls down with an acceleration greater than g what will happen after that i don't know but for some seconds you will fly after that i don't know what's going to happen let's not talk about what will happen after that because for two or three seconds you will fly definitely after that god knows you can understand what will happen okay shall we move on to some questions Yes, sir. So this is the first question that we are supposed to do. A man weighs eighty kgs. He stand on. He stands on a weighing scale in a lift, which is moving upwards with a uniform acceleration of five meter per second square. What would be the reading on the scale? Eighty plus. Option C, sir. Option C. Twelve hundred newtons. Everyone is getting it. Yes, sir. Okay, so it is m into it is moving down. No, it is moving up. So the apparent weight R will be equal to m into g effective, and g effective will be g plus a. Mass is eighty. G is ten. Acceleration is five meter per second square. You put the values, you get the answer, and you stay happy. Do we understand this? Okay. This one. A body of mass five kg is hung on a spring balance. So instead of putting it on a weighing machine, it is put on a spring balance mounted in a lift. The lift descends means comes down with an acceleration equal to the acceleration due to gravity. What is the reading on the spring balance? Yes. Sir, the answer is D. Answer is D, sir. B. D. D. Zero. The answer is zero. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, the answer is zero because he is moving down with. He is falling freely under gravity. He will be experiencing weightlessness. Yes or no? 
Are you going to yes, understand sir. this? Yes, sir. Okay. Next one. A man is standing on a weighing machine placed on a lift. When stationary, his weight is 60 kgs. If the lift is accelerated upwards with an acceleration of 2 meter per second square, the weight recorded would be how much? Yes, what is the answer? MG plus A. Option D, sir. Option D, 48 kg. Have you got the same answer? Okay, so that is correct. How are you supposed to do this? Simple, the value of R will be M into G plus A. Mass is 40 kgs, G is 10, acceleration is 2. So you will get it as 480 newtons. If you convert it into kgs, the mass, it will be 48 kgs. Do we understand this, everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Shall I move on to the next one? Yes, sir. This is the next one. The ratio of a man in a stationary lift to when it is moving downward with uniform acceleration, A is 3 by 2. What is the value of A? Yeah, I'm going to 
Yes. Anyone with any answer? Yes. Shall I do it? Oh. So difficult question. Shall I do it? So how are you supposed to do this? The ratio of weight of a man in a stationary lift. So weight in lift, weight in stationary lift. Divided by when it is moving downwards, weight in downward is given as 3 by 2. What is the weight of the person when he is in a stationary lift? What does the weighing machine read? M, M into G. When it is moving downwards, what does the machine read? R equals to M, G minus A. From here, you cannot find out the value of A. A will be coming as G by 3. You cannot find out A from here. Take this in the numerator here. Take this in the numerator here. Do it. Get the answer. Do it, do it, do it. Option B, sir. Option B is the answer. Have you got this? So remember this, such questions can come. One more theoretical question and we will call it a day. Hmm. Think, 
you can have this question in and and give me the answer a bird is sitting in a cage hanging from a spring balance let the reading of the weight be w1 now bird now starts to fly for first it was sitting in the cage and then it starts to fly inside the cage what is the reading the reading of the spring balance is w2 so in first case the reading is w1 in second case the reading is w2 out of the four options which is the correct option w1 will be equal to w2 w1 will be greater than w2 w2 will be greater than w1 or nothing definite can be predicted So which is the correct option? Hmm. Yes. Which one? Option B, sir. Option B, W1 will be greater than W2. Why do you think this is option B? When the bird is sitting, he's applying a force on the cage. The cage is applying a force backward, so that entire force will be registered. So it will basically measure the weight of the cage as well as the weight of the bird. But when bird is flying, there is no reaction. Bird is flying in the air, it will only measure the weight of the cage because the bird is in air. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So the value of weight registered in the second case will be less than the value of weight registered in the first case. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. That's it. Uh, that uh, brings us to an end of this uh, very long chapter. Just taken a lot of classes, two weeks almost, three weeks, but uh, two weeks, I think. Um, but we have covered every aspect of this. Newton laws of motion in the next class, we'll move on to the next topic of this, which is friction. We'll now start to deal with friction and try to complete it as the word time goes. So take care. I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, Monday, in the next class. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye.